know him today. I'm glad to know him as my Savior. Praise the Lord. My Redeemer, my God, my rock, and my salvation. He is our wonderful, wonderful Redeemer. We're so thankful for the Lord today. I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 58 and 6 today. Today is 4th of July is how we know it. There will be fireworks and firecrackers and all of that going off later this evening as the, the rain will clear out by dark. And uh, everybody will enjoy, as I said last week, blowing up $100 bills and $50 bills. Watching them get pretty in the sky. So celebrate that. And they do that in remembrance of the liberty and the freedoms that we have as a country. All of that is well and all of that is good. Sister Rhonda uh, made reference to it uh, this morning. Sister Gilda made reference to it. Brother Kevin made reference, I believe, in Sunday school. And I've already made reference to it. The most wonderful thing that we have to celebrate today is our freedom from sin. Amen, that we have been set free. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The title of my message this morning, today, this morning is Independence Day. And you may have noticed here lately I've been preaching two-part messages. Well, I'm going to preach the first part this morning, and you're going to preach the second part tonight. I'm going to, we're going to pass the mic this evening, and I'm going to give everyone who wants to an opportunity. I'm giving you... Uh, Fair warning now so you can prepare and be praying this afternoon what you want to say. But I want to hear some testimonies tonight of your Independence Day. If you can remember the day and the moment of when God saved you, of that encounter, or maybe it's just been so long ago that you can't remember the day and the hour. I have a hard time. See, I was like a yo-yo when I was a teenager, in and out and up and down, so I have to pinpoint that day. But I have a good idea of the day when I came back to the Lord. And I'm going to testify about that this evening. But also, you may just want to talk about what your independence, your freedom as a Christian means to you. So I want to give everyone an opportunity to do that. We don't have testimony services very often. We'll ask for testimonies in the service. Uh, but as I was preparing for today, I just really felt that on my heart. And uh, some would say, well, you just don't want to preach tonight. That's not the case. I, I believe that, uh, that many have something to say and have a testimony of that. And uh, if we don't have uh, enough to, to testify to fill the time, I will preach. And now, uh, as one preacher said, and I'll preach it right now. So I love to preach the gospel, but I also want to give you a testimony because we're, we're opportunity to testify because we're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, right? The blood that was shed for us, but also what's the second part of that? By the words of our testimony. So let's give the devil a black eye today. Uh, don't use that as your excuse not to be here tonight. I'm not going to put the microphone in your face and make you testify, but I want to give the opportunity. I'm using the microphone uh, for two purposes. I want everybody to hear your testimony. And number two, uh, when I preach, it goes out on Spreaker. So when you testify, it's going to go out on Spreaker as well. I want others to hear that because there may be somebody not in this building. Uh, our our uh, church services go out on not just Spreaker but Spotify and uh, several other platforms and go around the world. World. See, we never know who may tune in. We don't know the lives that we touch. We leave that up to God, but we take advantage of those platforms to be able to do that. And so just like you share my messages on social media, hoping that someone will hear it uh, tonight, maybe someone can hear your testimony of where God brought you from, of what God did in your life. It doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is. I want you to come ready to share your heart of your Independence Day. And I'll give you a better idea of what we're talking about when I talk about Independence Day here in a few moments. Isaiah 58 and 6 this morning is our text. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Isn't that wonderful? That the fast that he has chosen, the purpose, and the price that's been paid is that our bands of wickedness that held us could be loosed the heavy burdens that we carry could be gone and that we that were in oppression could be made free and not just that he said that he would not just break some of it but every yoke no more chains no more bonds that's independence my friend so today we celebrate the fourth of july or 
Independence Day. It's a federal holiday, and what it does is commemorates the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. So 245 years ago on July 4th, 1776, America became America. We declared our independence from the, king, the kingdom of Great Britain, and that's what we celebrate today as Independence Day. So in that, I want us to take the opportunity this morning, Sister Amy's got the image there, for those who may not remember it, and let's say the Pledge of Allegiance together. Can we do that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you. For our country, God, thank you for the men and women that have sacrificed so much for us to have this freedom. Thank you, Lord God, for those who have given their lives for this cause. Thank you for those families that have sat home while their husbands or their wives have gone to serve on the battlefield, some of them to not return. And we don't take that lightly, God. We're thankful today for the blessings, but most of all, we're thankful for our Lord and our Savior giving us this privilege to be born in the land of the free. And we're just so thankful today that we can celebrate our independence as a country. We can celebrate our great nation's birthday, God, and thankful for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. And I ask you right now for your anointing in the remaining part of this service as I declare unto the people Independence Day. And I know, God, that you will touch hearts and lives, minds and souls through your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We've got a lot of blessings, don't we? We begin to count. Some, one man said, when you begin to get in trouble and you begin to think that things are adding up and piling up, he said, instead of counting your problems, start counting your blessings. Uh, and then after a while, you realize that you can't count all of your blessings. Uh, but I would have to say, and maybe you would, would agree with me, uh, I believe that freedom is one, if not our greatest blessing. Freedom. When we think about that word freedom, there in our text, uh, that was the, the verse, uh, the word in that verse that I, uh, that I took and I bold printed it, uh, that the oppressed go free. Uh, so I'm thankful for this great blessing of freedom. Uh, and so when we look back and we think about this great country that's built upon freedom uh, and the framers of our U.S. Constitution uh, and what they did and everything that they did to line out uh, that Constitution, I am not a history buff by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, uh, I hated history in school. Uh, didn't pay a lot of attention to it. Uh, but as I've gotten older, I've come to appreciate uh, some of the great things about American history and the price uh, that was paid by those uh, who, that were there and it went before us, our forefathers here in America. And we find that there were some men that was the framers uh, of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, and that work that they have put together has been under attack. Uh, more and more, it seems, with each passing year. They're trying everything that they can do uh, to do something uh, against our Constitution. My problem with that is uh, that we know the history of the men uh, who framed the Constitution of America who were known as men of God. Men of prayer, men of devotion, uh, men of the word. Uh, everything in history tells us that they, uh, that the first thing that they wanted to do, uh, that, that we find in America, that our, our, our America is where we're at, uh, is so prosperous. One man asked, uh, how is it uh, that, uh, that uh, South America and all of them, uh, they have all of the resources and all of the ability uh, to have all of these great things, uh, but it's in the United States of America that they seem to have all that uh, freedom and all of that liberty and all of that. He said it's simple. Uh, they came looking for riches. Uh, the founders of America and the framers of the Constitution uh, came looking for God. Uh, and I am thankful to know uh, that we are built upon this foundation of still one nation uh, under God. Uh, they're trying to take it away day by day, week by week, month by month. It seems like more and more uh, a small majority uh, wants to tell 
tell us that we're not unified. A small majority wants to tell us that we're not a nation of people. We are a nation of immigrants, that's for sure. But we understand that we have come together as people from every background, every race, every creed. Listen, every religion, there's been many of them over the years, but we can come together as a country and as a people. They want to raise this flag and that flag, the pride flag, and and all kinds of different flags and put them in front of you. But listen, we don't need all the extra flags. There's one flag that gives everyone freedom and liberty that we can stand under. I'm not trying to give you a history lesson this morning, but what I'm trying to tell you this morning, if we have this great blessing of freedom, and don't let them lie to you and tell you that we live in a divided world where the black man and the white man can't get along. Can I tell you, I still pray for my black brothers and my black sisters and my Asian brothers and sisters and worship together with them and every contact that I have with someone of another race, I treat them with respect and they treat me with respect. When we do that, we have unity and we have freedom. I went on a trip this weekend and it's been a long time since I've went through a driver's license check. But I needed gas in the car and got off the exit and uh, sure enough, there was police cars everywhere doing a driver's license check. Not only did I get checked getting off the exit, I got checked getting back on the exit because I had to come from a different direction. And both of those officers that checked me were black gentlemen, very respectful to me, and I was very respectful to them. Took my license. One of them told me, you need to get some gas. And I said, that's why I got off the exit. And he also wanted to know what I did to the boy in the passenger seat because he was, I said, he worked all day. But we had a very good encounter But what politics and what media would want to tell you is those kind of encounters always end wrongly and roughly and badly. That's not the case. That's not the case. We have freedom to treat each other with respect. The framers of the U.S. Constitution did something here. In all of the freedoms that they ensured us of, they made sure that right there in the Constitution that they ensured our freedom of religion. So as an American, I have the freedom and the right to praise the Lord. I saw a goofball one time worshiping a fountain outside of his neighborhood. He was. He was standing there worshiping the fountain. All I could do, Kevin, is laugh and say, well, the Constitution gives him the freedom to do that. Worship your fountain if you want to, but I worship Jehovah. I thought, Sister Gilda, as I was riding down the road, just a young man, I said, that guy does not care who passes by and sees him standing out there worshiping a fountain. But we are very reserved about throwing our hands in the middle of the air at the intersection or at Walmart or anywhere else. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes when I'm out walking, I'll have uh, my playlist going in my ears, and and sometimes those songs get to to moving uh, in my heart and my soul. Uh, uh, Songs like Sister Gilda was singing this morning, be walking down the road uh, saying, I know a man who can. I can't help but to praise the Lord. I decided last week I needed to update my, my workout playlist. And, and so I changed some songs because I've been listening to the same ones just over and over. And I wanted to update it a little bit. And, and I was sitting there the other night and I just updated my playlist. And I thought, man, that looks good. Uh, that, that, that's going to, uh, that's some upbeat songs that'll help me stay focused while I'm working out. It'll be all of those good things. Uh, but, but I picked one uh, that got there that, man, it got me right in the middle of my workout. Uh, I'm there working out uh, and it's talking about the young lady uh, who goes next door uh, and pulls the little Raggedy Ann doll out of the trash can uh, and she brings it in and the, the Raggedy Ann doll's all ragged, the arms falling off, the eyes about to pop out uh, and she looks at mom and says, look what somebody threw away uh, and says she took it upstairs and laid it down uh, on her bed with her other dolls uh, because she liked the messed up ones uh, and she liked to repair the messed up ones and she showed love to it uh, and then it says 20 years later, A 17-year-old girl walks into a facility with needle tracks in her arms. Uh, It said, but this young girl that was uh, the one that had the raggedy end off took her by the hand uh, and said, come on in, baby. We'll give you some help. Uh, Why? Because she loved uh, to help the broken ones. Uh, Man, I'm standing there in the gym trying to work out. Got tears streaming down my face. uh, And I just had to stop right in the middle of it uh, and say, thank God uh, that you uh, are taking, uh, taking and working with this messed up one that you picked 
pick me up out of that garbage pile that I was in. Lord, help me to be like that young girl and to reach out to somebody else. Listen, if he can worship his fountain, if they can worship their statues, we also know that we have a freedom in our constitution to praise the Lord. But we act like we don't have a right. I'm thankful not only that I have a right, it's not an obligation, it's an opportunity for me to stand for what I stand for. And it's laid out there in our constitution. But you know that our freedom came with a great price. Over the years, these 245 years, men and women have given their lives for us to keep this liberty. They have made sure that we stay the land of the free. Why? Well, because of the brave. Because of those who have paid that great price, and we're thankful for them. We have so many, so many that we can thank, so many holidays that we use to commemorate them, uh, and we're thankful for that today, that they have paid that. But understand something, uh, that that's not where our freedom started. Our freedom did not start 245 years ago. Our freedom started about 2,000 years. 245 years ago. I don't know the exact number there, but over 2,000 years ago, that great freedom, that real freedom that we have, it doesn't come from living in America. It doesn't come from living in America. It's great to be an American, but there is some that's, uh, that's incarcerated. There's some, as we said earlier, that's in China, that is in, in Russia, and uh, so many different parts of the world that they know the same freedom that we know. See, we know it physically. We know it in our day-to-day lives. We're just free. If we want to be stupid, we're free to be stupid. Right? I see it every day. If we're... If we want to dress like goofballs, we got a freedom to do it. Just go to Walmart. You don't believe it. Walk down the aisles. You see it. Sometimes I wonder if people own the mirror, but they have a freedom to look that way. I I found myself walking down the aisle questioning, why? I I preached the message not long ago entitled, Why? Did you look at me? You just, why? It don't register with me, but they have a freedom to do that. They have a freedom. I have a freedom uh, to, to do what I want to do. So we know those natural freedoms, but there's our brothers and sisters in other countries. They don't know those natural freedoms. They don't have the freedoms that we have. They, they don't have the outward freedoms that we have, but still they're just as free as we are. Why? Because they have been born again. Because... Even behind bars for those who are incarcerated, I I have been one-on-one and I have been in services with those who who got incarcerated. They did things that put them in prison and jail, and they knew that they had to suffer the consequences of their actions, but they they were free. I've had them tell me, I'm stuck in this eight-by-eight, but I'm freer than I've ever been. I've had some tell me the best thing that ever happened to me was I got locked up in here because it was here that the Lord was able to deal with me and I was able to, sh- to, to be set free from sin. And Jesus put it this way in John 8 and 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Think about that. We live in the land of the free. We live in America. We're as free as free can be, right? We have freedom. Freedom of religion, all of those freedoms is laid out in our Constitution. Uh, and how many of us ourselves, or we know somebody, uh, that though they have those freedoms, uh, they don't take advantage of those freedoms? Too many people don't take advantage of the freedoms that they have. Uh, but Jesus, in his own words, said, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So he paid that price uh, for our freedom. And how did he do that? With his blood his blood was shed we talked about the men and women that shed their blood for our natural freedoms for the liberties that we have as americans Uh, but when we think about what true independence day is uh, see i celebrate an independence day of being born again uh, and it also comes from shed blood uh, and it comes from the one who shed uh, his blood on calvary for you and me uh, and that didn't just happen Uh, he didn't just show up uh, on a cross uh, but we know uh, by reading our bibles and studying our bibles that he started out uh, as a baby in 
in a manger in 33 and a half years he walked on the face of this earth uh, and in the prime of his adulthood uh, he died on that cross of Calvary uh, every bit of it prophesied everything uh, that fulfilled uh, in what Jesus did in the New Testament was prophesied in the Old Testament uh, and one of those prophets uh, Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53 uh, he, he takes and he illustrates for us there in his writings uh, the sufferings uh, that was going to take place by Christ on our behalf uh, and everything that Isaiah said it's amazing to me uh, how Isaiah put it uh, because he worded it in a fashion as if it already happened and he said that he was despised and he was rejected of men he was wounded for our transgressions he said that the chastisement of our peace was upon him he was bruised for our iniquities so we understand that all of our freedom as Christians, came at an unspeakable price. The second person of the Godhead, the Lamb of God. John looked at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And the, think of this. A man with no sin, 33 and a half years old, that's young, he was a young man, just right there in the beginning, in the prime of adulthood. And things beginning to come together, typically around that age. When you're 30, that's usually when things are really starting to happen and come together. And, and God doesn't do anything by happenstance or coincidence. But it was right there in the midst of that, in the middle of that, that Jesus went to that cross and gave us that liberty. He gave us that liberty. He was bruised there, and that freedom came with that unspeakable price, and it gave us freedom. One of the greatest blessings, if not the greatest blessing that we have, freedom came with that unspeakable price. So we think about that freedom, uh, and we think about that freedom and the liberty that it brings. Uh, understand something about freedom. We think about freedom, and we think about living in America, and we're free to do whatever we want to, but understand something. Uh, we're free to do whatever we want, but we're not free of the consequences of that decision. So understanding that today, that, that we live in America and we're free to make the decisions that we want, but there's consequences with every decision. Tegan hit me the other day, and I hit her back, and I told Tegan, I said, Tegan, understand something, honey, with every action comes a reaction. And so understanding that very simple, that you may have actions. I didn't hit her too hard. Don't think that I was being abusive. Every action that we have has a reaction. But understanding about freedom this morning is freedom does not give us liberty to do anything we want when we really think about it. We can, but we have to realize that sin enslaves. We're free. We, we, we live in the land of the free, but every one of us knows somebody. When I say who has a lost loved one, Hands go up all over this house. Why? Because we know somebody who is bound. Living in the land of the free, yet they're enslaved. Look back at our text this morning. He said, talking about the fast that he shows, he said it's to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Living in America is not enough, friend. Living in a land of the free is not enough. Because there's many that's living in a land of freedom, and they think that they have all of these liberties. They think, I can do whatever they want, but it's enslaved them in sin. And though they think that they're free on the outward inside, they're bound uh, by sinfulness. But we understand that Jesus also said in John 8, 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we get that, that we have been enslaved, but I'm thankful for Independence Day. I am. I'm thankful to celebrate. I, I gladly celebrate. I have an issue with the flag that I fly in front of my house is for some reason it always goes up and gets stuck in the gutter. I don't know why. I told Amy, I said, it's just the condition of America right now, I guess. keeps getting in the gutter. I don't know. But I wave that flag and I fly that flag because I am thankful for the freedom and the liberties and that I have the outward freedoms and the outward liberties. And, and I want to take advantage of that. When I, I see people out in this world that I shake my head uh, at the things that they do with their freedom. 
But what am I doing with my freedom? I also celebrate another Independence Day, and that's the day that I was born again. And it gave me freedom. And not only do I have an expressed outward freedom, but I have a freedom inside. And and I have been redeemed, and I've been blood-balled. And as we were singing this morning, because of that redemption, I I want to take that freedom, and I want to not uh, use that as a yoke of bondage. I don't want to use that, but I want to know that I have been given a freedom uh, to know the truth of God's Word. And I'm thankful for today that somebody introduced me to the truth of God's Word. Because I don't know about you, but I was living in darkness. I was living in sin. And I'm thankful that somebody introduced me to Jesus uh, and that I know him as my Lord and my Savior today. uh, And to understand that with that freedom that I have, uh, that we've got to realize this morning we are free to worship the Lord. It's not against the law to worship the Lord, it's not uh, against any petition that's been put out, that tells us that we can't worship the Lord. The problem is, is too many times we don't want to. We're free to, but we don't take advantage of Independence Day. I'm sure there's some people that don't celebrate Independence Day. There's some people that don't celebrate the 4th of July. In a hotel the other night, and was eating that awful breakfast, and was watching... They had somebody had Fox News, Fox Morning on the on the television, and the the young man that's on there that served in the military. I can't think of his name, but he he went around. He had somebody going around, and and they were out in streets of America, and they asked them, "Are you proud to be an American? Are you proud to be an American?" You would not believe how many said no. No, I'm not proud to be an American. And what I wanted to tell them, well, leave. But I tell them. But they gave all of their excuses of why they're not proud to be an American. And these were not foreign-speaking people. These were uh, just common people every day that you would run into walking down the street, and they, they gave their reasons. And you can imagine some of the reasons that they gave from if you watch the news or follow social media in any aspect of just a bunch of conjured up stuff that's going on to make us think uh, that that is what it's become, but that's not the case. But they, they said, no, no, I, I don't, I'm not proud to be an American. So we don't take advantage of those truths. And we look at that. I heard the shock and awe in your voice when I told you that. But how many of us are truly proud to be Christian? Somebody tell you that they're Christian, but you think that they're in the CIA. You think they're in the FBI, that they're undercover. You would think that they're in some special forces because they're doing a good job of portraying the fact that they're not born again. They'll they'll tell you with their mouth, but they're not taking advantage of those freedoms. Listen, people say, why do you go to church all the time? Because I'm free to. Why do you read your Bible every day? Because I'm free to. See, there's people in China, they get a hold of a Bible, and you know what they do? They write down as many verses as they can real quick because they know they've got to pass it on. We don't have to do that. You've probably got more copies of this book in your house than is in all of China. Just in an American home, there's dust on the Bible. I've got one in my hand. On this iPad that I am preaching off of, there's a Bible app on it. On the cell phone that I've got laying around here somewhere, there's a Bible app on it. There's an opportunity that, you know what, there's a little thing called Google Home that I have in my house, and I can say, hey, Google, read me John 3.16. You know what she'll do? Read me the Bible. We have it everywhere. We have the Word of God everywhere, but do we take advantage of that freedom? Why why do you do that? Because I'm free to. Well, why do you pray? Because I'm free to. Why do you do it? Because I celebrate my independence. I understand the price that was paid uh, for me to have this independence, uh, and not only do I celebrate it, but I live like a free man. Man, when you think about history, I I, I said I didn't uh, do a lot of history in school, but one thing that I loved to study was Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. 
I love to study that. I, I love to see that. Uh, why? Because once they got there, these slaves, uh, it broke forth, uh, broke free from that bondage that they were in. And when they got into that safe place, uh, man, they celebrated their freedom. Man, they're, they're shouting and they're running and they're rejoicing. Uh, it, I just got a glimpse of what it's going to be like when I get to glory, when I get to heaven. Uh, but understand something. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven uh, to rejoice and to praise and to glorify God. See, too many Christians, are, are trying to live in an underground railroad when you don't have to. You don't have to go underground. You don't have to hide out. Uh, you don't have to hide from the devil. You don't have to hide from the forces of hell. We can stand out uh, in the open. Uh, listen, we could take this service out in the yard if we wanted to, and nobody would do anything about it. Many have done it uh, during this so-called pandemic that we've been going through. Uh, pastors have stood on their front porches of their churches. Uh, they've stood on the tailgates of their trucks. Uh, they've gone out uh, in the churchyards uh, and done whatever they need it and nobody said uh, hey you can't do that there's some goofy states and cities uh, that's tried to enforce fines and different things uh, but ultimately they don't have a leg to stand on why uh, because our constitution gives us the freedom to do that uh, but there's something greater than our constitution friend uh, it's the word of God that has set us free uh, there should be a freedom and a liberty inside of you uh, as I preached last week that will burst forth out of you as river uh, of living water uh, is there a river uh, of living water flowing inside of you? Uh, is there a river of freedom that flows from you uh, to say that I was born uh, to praise the Lord? Uh, I am thankful that I was born uh, to be free, not just because I was born an American, uh, but because I've been born again by the blood of Jesus. Uh, I have been born with liberties uh, that's been instilled within me. Uh, a worshiper has been birthed inside of me. He said, God uh, is a spirit and those that worship him uh, worship him uh, in spirit in truth. Uh, any born again folks just wave at me this morning. Uh, if you're waving at me this morning, why don't you just lift the other hand with it uh, and worship your Redeemer. Uh, worship your God. Uh, why would I do that? Because you're free to do so. Uh, I'm free to run. I'm free to worship. Uh, I'm free to praise. Uh, why? Because I declare uh, an Independence Day uh, that was made possible by Jesus Christ. There's an old song. I believe Gaither's Sing it. But here's the words to it, part of the verse or chorus. We pledged allegiance to the American flag at the beginning of the service. I didn't just do that to be patriotic, but I did that because we all know the importance of that. Sometimes when i walking in my neighborhood, in front of my neighborhood is an American flag, and I'll stop on my walk, and I'll take time to stop, and I'll say the pledge to that flag. I remember in school that they take time in the morning to do that. I don't know if they still do, but when I was in school, they did. But there's something else that we need to, as born-again believers, pledge allegiance to. Songwriter said, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor His commands. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. We can pledge allegiance to our flag. We can stand for our country. We can wave our flag high. We can say that we've got our flag, our guns, our Bibles, all of those. That's, that's fine. That's wonderful. And that's dandy. But our ultimate allegiance has to be to the Lamb of God. And with all the strength that is within us and everything that is within us, we have an obligation and we have an opportunity to honor His commands and pledge our allegiance to Him and be submitted and committed to Him. Listen, Romans eight nineteen through 21 says it this way, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of Him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. There should be an earnest expectation that we're waiting on the manifestation of the Spirit of God. To know that we're not our own, but we've been bought with a prize, that we've been delivered from the bondage of corruption, that we've been brought out of darkness into this marvelous light, that we've been brought out, brought out of bondage into liberty, a fast that he has chosen, an opportunity that he has given for you and I to be free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Uh, we have all of those liberties. Uh, and why is that? Why has he set us free? What are we doing with our freedom? 
There's some people doing some goofy stuff with their freedom, right? In America, there's some goofy stuff going on. And like I said, they got a right to do it because they're free to do it. But what we as Christians, our Independence Day, what does that mean to us? Why did that happen? Why were we born again? If this was a classroom setting and I would go around the room and say, why were we born again? And I, I believe some hands would go up and say, so we can go to heaven, right? We would begin to, to say that so I could be brought out of sin, that I didn't have to live in sin and bondage any longer. All would be good answers. That I could be set free from the things that bound me. We're going to hear some of those testimonies tonight of people who will, will testify of, of God touching. Maybe you'll hear a testimony of someone who smoked three cartons a day and God set them free from nicotine. Maybe you'll hear the story of somebody who every fourth drunk a fifth and was surprised they saw the sixth. I don't know. But God set them free from that. Those are all wonderful things. And, and what, when we think about that's benefits of being saved. But that's not why he saved us. That's not why the Spirit of the Lord came upon our lives. Well, Jesus, Isaiah first said it, and this was in Jesus' first message. He takes the Bible. They introduced our guest speaker today is Jesus. And he takes the Bible and he opens it up. In Luke 4 and 18, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And he went on to finish the prophecies of Isaiah. He closed the book and he sat back down. Well, many will people say, well, the Spirit of the Lord has come on Jesus for that. Well, Jesus is no longer here in the flesh. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he said to us, Paul put it this way, that we now are his representatives by saying this, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. So that very first thing that Jesus stood up there in Luke 4, 18, and he's declaring the words of Isaiah, you know what? They become our declaration too. We are free. We're free to do what? We're free to preach the gospel. Are we preaching the gospel? We're free. He's anointed us uh, to preach the gospel. He's anointed us uh, to be like that young lady that I was talking about, to, to invest in the broken ones. Are we taking advantage of those freedoms, of that independence and that liberty that we have to do so? That, that is a great uh, anointing that has been placed upon our life, a great opportunity uh, for us to not use our freedoms as vanity, to not use our freedoms uh, to do crazy and goofy stuff, but our freedom to know uh, that there is those out there that needs liberty uh, and needs to be set free and to know that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, the anointing is upon our life for just that. So why do you celebrate Independence Day because I'm proud to be an American. Why as a Christian do you celebrate your Christian Independence Day? Because I'm glad to be free from sin. And I want to tell somebody else that there is a great liberty that you can have in Jesus Christ. So in closing this morning, we understand this. Jesus came to give us life, but he didn't stop there. He said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So you may tell me this morning, I'm born again, i got life. But are you living it more abundantly? What does that mean? Are you taking advantage of all your freedoms? There, there's some that you may join clubs, different things. and There's perks that come with that. But you've come to realize one day that you haven't been taking advantage of all the perks. And all the opportunities that you have. Man, I can't believe... I could have done that. I could have got rewards for this or done that. There's all kinds of things out there. And I believe many of, that, of us are that way in this Christian walk. We're just saved and satisfied. We're just, I'm just glad that I'm going to heaven. But to know that there's so much more to it than that. There's abundant life to be lived. There's to live out these freedoms. Understand that we have it because of the price that he paid for our conversion. He understand that we can declare our independence from this sin-cursed world. 
We're no longer bound by this world. So understanding this morning as Christians, we can celebrate more than our nation's birthday. We, we can celebrate that, absolutely, but we have so much more to celebrate today. We can celebrate our personal independence as a newborn believer set free from this sinful world. I'm no longer by... I want to hear those testimonies tonight. Come with those testimonies of your Independence Day. Your Independence Day. I want to hear those tonight because I believe there's some wonderful testimonies of what He has set us free from. As you stand with me, Galatians 5 and 1 gives us a great reminder. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know what that tells us? It's possible to get tangled up in bondage again. Stay away from it. Stay away from the things. We've got to take an about face from it. He says, stand fast in the liberty. It's time, time that we stand firm in our liberty and know that Christ hath made us free. Let's celebrate that. Celebration usually comes with clapping, smiling, dancing. Right? That's what a celebration is. People are going to blow up fireworks tonight because they're celebrating. How many know somebody that just find any reason to celebrate? There are some people, they, they want to celebrate just because they want to get drunk. There is. They, they find anything to celebrate. We were sitting at the baseball game, and Noah told me on the way home, he said, those girls behind me was getting on my nerves, Dad. I said, yeah, me too. The girl there, she had her drink. She asked me if she spilled it on me one time. She didn't. But she said, i got to take a toast to that. I don't even know if they knew a baseball game was going on or not. She was finding any reason to celebrate. She said, that's a, that's a good reason to to take a toast. Cheers. Some people find any reason to celebrate. I wish Christians would get the memo. Amen. Because we have the greatest reason to celebrate. We have the greatest reason to worship. It seems like Pentecostal folks have got quieter. And those who have told us that we don't need to be so high strung seems to be getting it. I've watched it. There's a lot of Pentecostal folks that are are happy to share a young preacher man by the name of C.T. Towns. They share all of his videos. He's a fired up preacher. And every time they, they do it, I want to tell them, he's Baptist. He's Baptist. And he's more Pentecostal than you are. Why? Because I've heard him say it. He said, I'm just glad to know that I've been born again. This is a Baptist preacher that you'll find running the backs of the pews, shouting and worshiping and glorifying God. He's found something that we're missing. Every opportunity he gets, that young man celebrates his Independence Day. I don't have to wait till July 4th of next year to celebrate my Independence Day. Understand there's some that may testify to you tonight on, just throw a date out, June 4th, 1982, I got born again. But understand, they don't just wait like a birthday to come to church and celebrate that. They sung it this morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. You know what that reminds me of? Maybe not the day I got saved, but this is the day that I'm reminded of independence. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you're thankful this morning for the opportunity that you have to be born again, why don't you join me around these altars? a little bit different this morning. Why don't we come with our hands raised? Just stand to our feet with our hands raised this morning, thanking Him, praising Him, worshiping Him for your Independence Day that you're going to come and testify about tonight. Will you come join me around the front this morning with your hands lifted up and just praising Him for that independence that you have, that freedom. Father, we come with lifted hearts, lifted hands. Thank you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thankful that I'm no longer bound by the world. Thankful that I'm no longer bound by the oppressions of the enemy. 
Almighty God, we rejoice in You. We thank You and we praise You and, and we magnify You and we just glorify Your holy name. Oh, Lamb of God, we don't have to be provoked. We don't have to be purged. We don't have to be poked and pried. But Lord, we got a praise in our heart this morning. Oh, Lamb of God, we just love You and thank You and praise You. Just take this opportunity right now to worship the Lord. You don't need a cheerleader. You don't need somebody to say, everybody say this and everybody say that. Just from the depths of your heart, uh, just from the depths of your being, from the depths of your gratitude uh, for the price that was paid for your freedom and your liberty as a born-again believer, uh, let that overflow uh, in worship unto the King of kings for a few moments here this morning. Thank You, Lord. 